love song yet. I feel like Oh You Won after all these breakup songs. I'm gonna play you one that came from a pretty rare plot of inspiration. Uh, my girlfriend loves to watch absolutely horrible, depressing TV shows. Intervention and hoarders, that kind of stuff. And that Jeffrey Dahmer thing came out, she's like, oh, we should get popcorn for that one. I was like, oh. I'm more of a Family Guy Simpsons person, so. so. But we came to agreement, though, that both of us are happy with. We watch what she wants and until she falls asleep, then I can watch what I want. So. Like I was tough and fair on that one. <laughs> but one night we were watching one of her shows and uh, this guy started talking about the relationship he had with his mom when he was quite young. And apparently when he, was, when he was very small, she called him over and sat him down on her knee and said to him, if you were my first child, you would have been my last child. <laughs> I'm not a parent, but I don't think that's cool. <laughs> I'd take the wooden spoon any day over that. <laughs> But do you get the idea for this one? I wrote this one with Donovan Woods. I've been in love a time or two, but it all fades to gray when compared with you. Right from the start and all the way through, it's the easiest thing that I'll ever do. That's the last one of those that's going to happen tonight. <laughs> well, the new album is mostly uh, mostly new songs. I put Coal Mining Blues on there because I always want to have a solo version of that. And, uh, this next song is the only cover on there. It's a song I've played many times for a lot of years. I love playing it. I want to play it. It's my show, so here we are. <laughs> yeah. I've had, uh, had three ladies sing with me the last uh, couple years. Micah, Reenie, and Haley Smith are absolutely fantastic, and uh, I haven't in the studio working on something else, and just uh, asked her if they knew this song, and turns out, you know, they kind of knew it, but hadn't really, uh, hadn't really sang it a whole lot before, so I printed up the lyrics, and 
the version they made it on the recording is the very first time they sang it, and it's, it's pretty freaking amazing. So I want to make sure I share that with people and get it on there. So. Anyway, like I said, I want to play it tonight, but obviously they aren't here, so that means you guys get to sing. We got about four people into it right on. This is going to be good. It's going to be shit hot, I can tell already. Now it's going to be good. I'm feeling good about this. So I'll kick things off, and then I'll coach you in. It's going to be amazing. It's not amazing. It's your fault. It's your money, so it's all good. <laughs> Just sing it out nice and loud. 
the person next to you doesn't sound any good, sing louder than they are. If they start singing louder than you, just take the hint and keep on singing anyway. <laughs> says, I really like all the other songs that you do. Bomb, bomb, baby. Stone guaranteed to blow your mind. I'm a love bomb for you, baby. Stone guaranteed to blow your mind. If I can't have your love for my own, I won't leave none of your, leave none of your, leave none of your. 
share of time on the road. Woo! I'm not that old, but I do go back to a time before you had satellite radio in your car. You, know, you had to travel around with a pack of your, your favorite compact disc for your compact disc player. Well, no, I'm not that old. <laughs> no, I remember my folks went from 8-track to uh, cassettes. We had that weird thing you put the the tape into the eight track thing and it never worked. Anyway, we really need to talk about that now. But anyway, we're just going on about CDs anyway. So eventually on a long trip, you'd run out of uh, options. You know, you'd listen to everything a few times. So you pull into a gas station and see what they have in the bargain bin. And one of these trips I pulled in and they had some kind of a, you know, greatest hits of the blues. Somebody made a compilation. And so I, I put that in and got, got a little while down the road, probably two or three times through the whole album. And after a while, I was kind of hit with the realization because you know, I didn't have anybody in the car to talk to. And this is the kind of stuff I think of when I'm by myself is that uh, really, if you want to be a blues singer, all you had to do was sing like Cookie Monster. <laughs> I've since learned better, but I still had fun thinking that at the time. So of course, when you're by yourself and have nobody to keep you from thinking about things like that, you start to think, well, if Cookie was going to see a blues song about, you know, the blues, what would he sing about? Cookies is the obvious answer. It's like, was gonna so then I got thinking more, if Cookie was going to sing a blues song about cookies, what would that sound like? Well, I'm here, and you're here, and we passed the point of the show where you're going to be able to get a refund. You get to see what I think Cookie Monster sound like singing the blues. But this this also might be a very romantic point of the night for you. So. C is for Cookie. 